Reporting for the Intermountain Christian News, I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here at the White House. A big deal today for me in the White House press briefing with uh, NSC Admiral John Kirby. I yelled out a question, what about Russia banning a Jewish agency? I wanted to continue with that, with about that agency being banned from immigrating Jews into Israel from Russia. But uh, Admiral Kirby uh, criticized me in front of everyone here and uh, pointed out that this is a question for uh, Press Secretary Corinne Jean-Pierre to call upon me. Now many news reporters here are being ignored by the press secretary, so I'm yelling out a question like other journalists from the back row and others yell out questions, and they usually aren't being criticized. Uh, so this was a, a key, very intense moment having with Admiral Kirby uh, on behalf of my question uh, for the Jewish people regarding anti-Semitism issues uh, overall. And so I will be playing a, a video clip of this uh, right after this piece. Uh, I've, this is an introduction to Admiral Kirby trying to put me in place and uh, being critical of my question. That she will. Admiral, what about okay. Russia? What about Russia banning a Jewish agency? Sir, okay. sir, okay. sir, okay. sir so, let, let Kareem, let, please let Kareem call. In terms What about Russia condemning Israel? Russia has been threatening Israel for helping Ukraine and also uh, for, for Israel bombing uh, the Damascus Syria airport. Any response to Israel that's being threatened by Russia? Uh, I think our response will be the, 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 the same as it has been now for the last s several months. I mean, uh, obviously, Russia is feeling uh, the pressure, the pressure being isolated, the pressure of having a military on the ground uh, that clearly has not performed as advertised. I mean, they still haven't solved their command and control problems, their logistical problems, their unit cohesion problems, their joint fires integration problems. And so they tend to lash out at countries that are providing support to Ukraine. We're grateful for the support that Israel has been, has been providing, as well as so many other nations, more than 50 have signed up to provide some measure of security assistance to Ukraine. And that shows you that this is not just a Europe problem. It's nations around the world that are stepping up to here to, to defend Ukraine. Regarding, 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 two-state solution dividing Israel or stopping the welfare payments sent to the Palestinian Authority who use the money for their pay-to-slay reward system, and I have a follow-up question. Okay, well, I would just note that I spoke to this uh, last week uh, on Wednesday, where I noted that the United States is deeply concerned by the recent violence in Jerusalem and the Temple Mount and across the West Bank, and we also strongly condemn the recent rocket attack on Israel. You may or may not have seen also that the President conducted a call with Prime Minister Bennett on Sunday morning. Uh, he accepted an invitation uh, by Prime Minister Bennett, Bennett to visit Israel in the coming months, no specific date, yet uh, he took note of the ongoing efforts between Israeli and Palestinian officials to lower tensions and ensure a peaceful conclusion to the holy season of Ramadan, and he also uh, affirmed his, our unwavering support for Israel and its defense needs and welcomed the historic $1 billion allocation to replenish Israel's Iron Dome system. Okay, yes. In view of continued Palestinian violence against innocent civilians, is the Biden administration willing to stop payments? to the anti-Semitic UN agency, UNRWA, and support restoring the Jewish cemetery in Vilnius, Lithuania, to its former glory. Uh, again, I, I think I, I don't have any changes to announce to our policy. I spoke to our condemnation of the violence just now, as last and last week as well, and noted also our call to the Prime Minister. Go ahead. Thank you.
announce that. I have nothing to announce about. Yeah. Has, yes. What is this administration response to Israel for their role as mediator in this Russia Ukraine crisis? And I have a follow up question. Okay. Uh, well, we certainly support the efforts of a range of leaders to, that, uh, who are uh, hoping to play a diplomatic role here. And there are a number of leaders around the world who have also had engagements with Russians and engagements with the Ukrainians. And we just ask that they all engage closely with Ukrainians as well. Okay. To, to help Europe develop energy independence from Russia. Will the Biden administration drop its opposition to the EU East Med pipeline being developed by Israel, Cyprus, and Greece? Look, I think there's going to be decisions made by European leaders about how to reduce their uh, their any any level of dependence they have on Russian oil. You've seen a number of leaders this week announce their intention to ban oil imports from Russia. But I would remind you that pipelines are a means of moving oil. It's not a means of production. Uh, but I point you to the European leaders to speak to that. Thanks so much, everyone. What will President Biden's response if Israel bombs Iran's nuclear reactors? I, I am not going to get into that kind of that kind of hypothetical, but thank you, <laughs> thank you for the question. Hi. The days ahead. Yes. Yeah. What, what is uh, President Biden's response to the people of Afghanistan who are now in the hands of the Taliban terrorists and feel abandoned by the United States, or to those in Taiwan and elsewhere that are fearful that the U.S. will abandon them to the aggression of China? And follow up to that is what is President Biden's response to people in Israel and other countries who might also believe that the U.S. will abandon them to terrorists? So to the first question, President Biden and all of us, as I said in my opening comments, are heartbroken by the human consequences that have unfolded and could continue to unfold in Afghanistan. We believe passionately in human rights and human dignity, and we want to work with the international community to advance that wherever we can. But President Biden was not prepared to have American men and women continue to fight and die in the civil war of another country in order to achieve that. We will use every other tool at our disposal to achieve that, and we will do so day after day, month after month, in the period of ahead uh, on behalf of the people of Afghanistan. To your question about allies, we gave 20 years of American blood, treasure, sweat, and tears in Afghanistan. We gave them every capacity in terms of training and equipment to stand up and fight for themselves. And at some point, it was the time for the United States to say that the Afghan people had to stand up for themselves. We believe that our commitments to our allies and partners are sacrosanct and always have been. We believe our commitment to uh, Taiwan and to Israel remains as strong as it's ever been. Keep in mind that with respect to Afghanistan, we said back in 2011 that we would be out in 2014. We stayed another seven years far and above and beyond the commitment that we made more than a decade ago. And the last thing that I would say is that President Biden is laser focused on accomplishing the core national security objectives of the United States. And when it comes to Afghanistan, that was getting bin Laden and degrading Al Qaeda. We accomplished that and he believes it was time for our troops to come home. Yes. We read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts.